So I want to, I want to, I want to steer us towards this because I was watching one of your episodes and you were talking about, Hey, when you get these huge upswings, you got to take advantage. You got to do something with it because it's going to be there. Eventually there's a downswing coming. And if you're just like, woo party now, we got money coming out of our ears. Let's buy some stuff on the other side. When the downswing comes, then you need desperately need the money. It's not there. So Absolutely. You were, talking, you were talking about making investments with your profits, which if, if you follow this channel, that's what we're all about. But, I'm curious to hear what do you like to do with your money and where do you typically prioritize it if you have a big win? Yeah, generally speaking, I like to prioritize it in anything that holds value, whether it's like vehicles and doing Toro, whether it's like if you want to do it on a smaller scale uh, or if it's real estate with Airbnbs. Uh, I do. I prefer real estate with Airbnbs. Um, that's me personally, because I find that they have a higher rate of return for value on them. Uh, and once you get to having a couple, you know, having extra is not really that much more work. Uh, you find out it, it just becomes more work to hire more people. Um, but once you have the right people in place, uh, it runs like a smooth oiled machine. So that that's what I found that's worked for me. I've also found uh, flipping cars has worked, you know, um, where if you find a, a, a an antique car, but beware, you can lose your ass off in antique cars. Pardon my vulgarity, but um, you can, uh, yeah, you can certainly lose money in that business too. And you can lose money in real estate as well. But uh, anything that you can find some kind of value of, uh, or like I said, Toro is another element on the smaller scale where you can get a used car. Um, you know, you can get like a, a, a Toyota or a Kia for 20 grand and then you can start renting it out for 50, 60, 70 bucks a day. I mean, that money adds up. That's just pure profit in the bank. Um, so those are things I stress to people who when they do have big wins, the tendency is, oh, let me go look at a, uh, a cool watch. Um, you know, let me right. go get a really cool bag. Let me get a Louis Vuitton $600 belt, um, you know, or like an Omega Seamaster watch. I mean, I, I've heard it all and I'm like, no, I'm like, even if you invested in crypto, you know, invested in something that's going to acquire value that you can eventually liquidate. Um, and that, yeah. that's what I encourage my students to do. Nice. Nice. Really good. So are you in the stock market at all with your uh, I have some stocks. Uh, most of my stuff is uh, like uh, mutual funds that reinvest with themselves. Um, okay. You know, one of the stocks that I've held for a really, really long time is Darden because uh, I used to work for Red Lobster once upon a time when I was 18. Oh. <laughs> I yeah. used to get their stocks for 10 bucks a piece. And yeah, now they're worth a lot. But um, I always reinvest whatever I make off of that back into it. So um, nice. But I do do crypto as well. I know Bitcoin is on a pretty big boom right now. Oh, yeah. Um, I do crypto as a, I want to say as a necessity of being a professional poker player, not because I enjoy investing in crypto. Um, my brother owns Thatch Computer Consulting and has uh, a really large IT firm. And it's interesting to hear his theories on crypto because I don't think he has any crypto whatsoever. And um I can't remember all of his reasons why, but I know some people are just completely turned off by it and I can understand and respect those opinions. Hmm. But yeah, I, I have crypto because it's necessary for my trade. I was going to say, did, did you just kind of stumble into it? A lot of these, a lot of poker players are like, oh yeah, I just kind of was using it to play online. And then the next thing I know they were way up and they went, maybe I should read about this a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I wish I wish I that camp? no, I did not. No. I had somebody try talking me into a ten thousand dollar investment when Bitcoin was two hundred dollars a coin. Oh. Um, yeah, <laughs> trust me, uh, that was ace <laughs> down in New Orleans if he's watching right now. But uh, I should have listened to him, but I did not. Uh, but that's OK. I mean, it's it's one of those things like as a poker player, we deal with cryptocurrencies because sometimes we run into a poker room where you know, we might not have as much of a buy in on us as we intend to. That's usually not a problem for me. But uh, I used to make people prior to COVID call me daddy whenever they needed money because they'd come up to me. I, I literally had people on the circuit that, you know, they just saw me at six other stops and they would come up to me. I'd be in the middle of a poker hand at a, at a tournament and they'd say, 
Hey, can I pay pal you two thousand dollars? I brought ten k and I'm broke. And I'd say, Yeah, you just gotta call me daddy in front of the whole table. And he goes, Hey, <laughs> daddy. And then I count it right out in the middle of a hand and hand it to him. You know. <laughs> but uh, I was I was known for yeah. If you need a PayPal or or you know Apple Pay a guy on the circuit, I you know I I always had a little extra cash on me, so I usually never had that issue. But yeah, you start running into Bitcoin scenarios too, where it's just easier just to to trade, you know, Bitcoin when you settle up or whatever the case may be. So, so if I'm at the series this year and I'm out of money, it's really just a question of my tolerance <laughs> for shame. Like yep. how much how much shame can I handle? 